Hello, my name is Tim Huffman, and in five minutes, you'll know what I mean when I say intensive philanthropic training program. But for now, let's stick to the art of saving the world. Now, you say, Tim, I'm not sure I can save the world. It's rather big, and it has a lot of problems, and it's true. The world has more problems than I can fit on a single slide or adequately explain in any detail in 15 seconds. So, I'm going to focus rather on our response to those problems. Disaster strikes and we stand paralyzed. Perhaps not so paralyzed that pigeons come and roost on our heads, but non-responsive nonetheless. And why? Why is this? Uh, well, often it's because we're afraid. We don't know uh, what, what we can do, um, and it's because we start to defer the responsibility. The more people who see a problem you'd think, the more people get involved. But it's actually the opposite that's true. The more people who get involved, the more people who can see, the less likely any one person is going to get involved. It's kind of backwards, but it's true. It's called the bystander effect. And it's rooted in fear. We're afraid. Am I the person who's supposed to be acting? Am I doing the right thing? Now, fear, you say, is motivating, right? Well, sometimes. Sometimes it motivates us to be incredibly strong, but sometimes it motivates us to not act at all. And the difference that gets made is whether or not we feel confident. If you think that there's nothing to be done, you tend not to do anything. Whereas if you think there is something to be done and you're the one to do it, you act. So, if this is so important, I want to ask this question. If our confidence is the primary indicator of whether or not we do the thing that we feel needs to be done, then why don't we engage in behaviors that make us feel more effective, more confident, more competent? So does saving the world involve putting on a mask and a cape and running around and having superpowers? That would be awesome. I think about having superpowers regularly. But how much more awesome would it be to, uh, to be that person who chose to overcome the bystander effect, to make, make the conscious decision to become good at something that needed to be done, so when it happened to real people, you could become a real hero. So if you want to get good at things, you need to train. Find a thing in the world that needs to be doing and do it. If you want to do the right thing, first you need to know how. I have a very, very strong belief that simply being a good person is not enough. It's not going to save the world. We need to look very carefully at our problems and then systematically hone our ability to respond to those problems. So on an individual level, what does that look like? First, identify your talents. Maybe you're a great musician, maybe you're a great artist, maybe you're great leaping around barefoot, whatever it is. <laughs> Find what you're good at. What, what do you enjoy doing? What do you love? What are you passionate about? That's the first step. The next step is to train. Uh, while discussing uh, learning how to play the, the, the piano with a friend of mine, he said, only, an hour of, uh, uh, only one hour a day, and eventually you become very good at the piano. What is worth 4% of my life if it meant that I could better respond in a time of need? Now, I'm also interested in answering this question on a larger level, and that is what brought me to the idea of an intensive philanthropic training camp, or the art of radical altruism. We have gyms to hone our bodies, we have schools to hone our minds, but where is that place where we get together to solve our social problems? So, this intensive training program would bring together professionals from all different areas, both to share their knowledge and their confidence, and also to create a culture of radical altruism. And then we start training people, right? Maybe it starts with weekend seminars, but becomes a six-week training camp in the desert where we train a group of people to peacefully but radically make the world as beautiful as we can, a living piece of art. As a Save the World kind of guy, I'm interested in skills like these. And at first, I'm daunted by this list because there's a lot of stuff that we need to be able to do if we're going to make the world as beautiful as we want it to be. But then I'm heartened by the reminder that they are, in fact, skills and things that we can all get better at if we work at them, maybe just one hour a day. I think it's also heartening to be reminded that when people refuse to do the volunteerism that you want them to, maybe it's not because they don't care. Maybe it's because they don't know how. So feel free to contact me uh, if you're interested in any of these ideas or if you want to join the unstoppable march toward a better world and you think I'm someone you want to walk with. So I leave you with the following prediction. 
When history looks back at our troubled times, it will remember that the people who first changed themselves were the people who changed the world. And they will be remembered for nothing other than heroes. Thank you.